Howdy! Welcome everyone to a brand new RPG Exploration Society series. Over the next five episodes, we'll be teaching you the ropes of playing Savage Worlds, the fast, furious, and fun system from Pinnacle Entertainment. Uh, now, we're going to be focusing on just one of the many settings for Savage Worlds, which is Deadlands. So this is, this is what we're covering. There you go. Uh, all settings require the Savage Worlds core rulebook to play. So these episodes will cover a lot of the basics. So if you're looking to play anything else, um, this is going to be a good a good setup for you, whether you're playing Deadlands or not. Uh, so, And I'm finally excited to deep dive uh, into this system with all of you. So uh, before we get too far into things, joining me on this mission, let's go around and introduce the society members we have this week. Um, let's start with, uh, Noir. Hey, that's me. Uh, hi everybody. I'm Noir. Uh, I go by he, they, um, I'm, I'm playing, I get to play a spooky, a spooky, uh, a, a ghost cowboy, a spooky. which is a spooky ghost cowboy, which is, uh, which is my dream. Uh, I, uh, I'm very excited. I'm the uh, community manager for Evil Genius Games. Uh, we have a Kickstarter and all that stuff. Go on my tw uh, Twitter to check that out. But that's me. <laughs> Yay. Uh, Megan. Oh, hi. I'm Megan Caves. I've been around here. Maybe you saw me once. I don't know. Um, but now I own uh, Gone Rogue uh, Entertainment, which is my little production company. And I have Harbingers. It's running right now, which is a Savage World show. The setting is hidden, but you might just find it out soon. I don't know. Maybe watch it on Friday night, 6 p.m on my YouTube Gone Rogue Int. Um, yeah, that's the main thing I'm doing. Other things, I don't know, just follow me on Twitter and it'll it'll be there. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> hi. <laughs> and certainly not least, uh, Nomadic. Hello, uh, my name is Gnome, pronouns he, him, and I'm super stoked to be playing uh, some Deadlands. Uh, I think this is going to be really awesome. What a great cast of uh, friendly faces to go travel out west with. Uh, you could find me uh, doing TTRPG things and TTRPG spaces over on Twitch, TikTok, Instagram, uh, Twitter, everywhere, anywhere. It doesn't matter. You just follow me wherever it's nomadic. It's probably me. <laughs> so <laughs> I feel that um in my heart uh I'm everywhere at Savage Sa Savage Saving Throw show that's not the first time or the last time I'll ever do that uh you can also find me at Gadzook on Twitter uh and yeah um I do want to mention we have one more cast member uh Rachel Seely at Sunny Seely on Twitter uh they are dealing with some power issues right now at their uh where they are so um they may or may not be able to join us today if not we will we must continue on but we will uh we will welcome them back next week um saving throw like pbs relies heavily on viewers like you over 90 percent of our income comes from you which means shows like this just wouldn't happen without your support. So uh, your Ko-Fi tips, I say Ko-Fi, other people say Kofi, other people say coffee. I don't know. Ko-Fi, your Ko-Fi tips and subs go towards paying our cast, our crews. We get music from that. We get games from that. We get accessories. We get to go to conventions and more all through your help. So consider supporting us on Ko-Fi and becoming a member of our Exploration Society. Uh, Use exclamation point Ko-Fi in chat for a link. It's quick, it's easy, and with a tip of just $15, you can send a toast to us, which we will read out loud. Uh, and if you sub, you also get a bunch of swag like uh, t-shirts and tokens. Oh, do I have any handy? No, of course not. I, I'm in the midst of unpacking and everything is all wild and everywhere. Anyway, yeah. There's uh, T-shirts, tokens, mugs, uh, uh, and and a whole lot more. So thank you, and um, I might be opening up some goodies that your tips can unlock in a later episode. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, someone asked if subs can give rerolls. Not yet, but <laughs> soon. Uh, having said that, 
These episodes have been generously sponsored by Pinnacle Entertainment, and uh, I thank them for their support. So pressure's off, noobs. Uh, but <laughs> if you like what we do, do consider a continuing pledge on Ko-Fi. It really does help. Uh, and last, but certainly not least, I do want to give a special shout out to our longtime supporter, Campaign Coins. Use exclamation point coins in chat to get a link to these amazing tools for your table. You can use them as in-game currency, as bennies, as tokens, whatever. Not only that, but Campaign Coins created the pins. Again, do I have these pins handy? Yes, I do. Created the pins that we... It won't. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, there. Um, it's probably out of focus. Anyway, they created the pins which we use uh, for uh, when you become a society member uh, on Ko-Fi. So go check them out today. Now, it is Weston time. No? It's better than Morbin time. Um, we're playing the latest and greatest in the series. We're playing Savage Worlds Adventure Edition. There are other Savage Worlds editions out there. This is the one we are playing right now. So if you are looking for classic or deluxe or anything like that, I'm sorry, you're out of luck. We are playing Suede, the Savage Worlds Adventure Edition. The core book has basically everything you need to play and has a number of items for adapting things to your preference. So you literally can play anything just using this rule book. But there are setting books as well, like Deadlands, or East Texas University, or um, Flash Gordon, or Pathfinder, uh, that each have specific lore, mechanical effects, new rules, and sundry items to fully immerse yourselves in those worlds as well. So give them, uh, give them a look. But that's what we're doing. We're playing Savage Worlds Adventure Edition. Now, Deadlands is the, dare I say it, the original Weird West RPG. I don't know. It, was there a Weird West RPG before Deadlands? I don't know. And if there was, I don't care. No, that's not true. I do kind of care. Um, set in an alternate history to our own, the U.S. has seen modern advancements and eldritch horrors since the discovery of a mysterious element known as Ghost Rock. More precious than gold, Ghost Rock powers fantastic machines and abilities, but also has some mysterious side effects as well as ancient beings who seek the corruption of mankind, bringing fear and despair to the world. This is the world that you all are coming into. And now uh, it's a great time for me to uh, let you know that this is for you, the viewer, and we're here to answer your questions as much as we're able to while we play the game. So if you have questions regarding the mechanics of Savage Worlds, or Deadlands specifically, leave them in chat with the preface question and tag one of our mods so that we can see them. Uh, DJ Regular or uh, Simi David or BSB Care or I don't know who else is in here who's a mod that uh, might be able to help, but uh, we will try to answer as much as we can. And I know that there are some Pinnacle folks in chat. Hi, Jody. Hi, Clint. Um, and uh, th that may be able to help as well. So, um, yeah. Leave us your questions. We, we, we hope that we can cover them for you. So, um, in Savage Worlds, character creation is a bit more free-flowing than other systems. There are no classes you must choose and adhere to. So instead, you can really build who you want from the ground up. Theoretically, anybody can potentially do anything. So you're not stuck out in the field without a healer or without your sharpshooter or whatever, everybody can potentially do anything. <laughs> That's a pretty big concept in RPGs, I think, and part of what makes Savage Worlds such a popular system for adaptations. So uh, with that in mind, I want to go around and talk a little bit about character concepts, and we'll just kind of get a baseline for where everybody is planning to go with this and uh, see what you want to play with. So let's let's start. Gnome, do you want to kick us off with, with your concept? I feel like it's going to set a tone. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've even got a name. Can I, can I share the name? Or are we saving names? You... Normally, I'd never come prepared with a name, but it just like I knew exactly what I wanted. Share, share a name. <laughs> All right. Y'all. Y'all. 
I'm going to be playing Charlie Big Bazoo Warren, a prospector. <laughs> Just a man of the stone who is looking for some gold or things beyond that. Excited to play the big bazoo. If you don't know what a bazoo is, it's a big mouth. <laughs> and, and Charlie Warren sure got a big mouth. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Off in the distance. Written nothing. <laughs> Char- Charlie Ward, is that it? Did I... Did I get that right? Warren. Warren. Uh, W-A-R-R-E-N. Charlie Warren. Okay. All right. That's amazing. Uh, Megan, are you ready? Well, uh, <laughs> so what I actually want to do here, because I know uh, Deadlands well and have played in it before i want to see what everybody else creates and then see if i can create something that fits in the in-between like sure um not using essentially like kind of see if i can put myself on the spot and create something that way that's unique <laughs> that's I, what i would like i like it okay okay so we'll kind of circle back to you um and <laughs> noir hey uh i I came to bring all the age. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, call me Cutlery because some uh, this this boy is sharp. All right, here we go. Uh, I'm playing a uh, an an a innocent uh, who was slain, who's come back, uh, looking to uh, avenge his death uh, and the death of other innocents slain like him. You know, just just your just your common picture background. Uh, I I don't have a name yet. Um, I, I, also, I think uh, the reason that he came back is obviously because uh, he made a deal with the Crossroads Devil. Yeah. Oh, can I change my concept? I would like to change my concept, please. Okay, okay. Uh, now I is the time like, to do it. <laughs> I would like to be a musician who made a deal with the Crossroads Demon that got cut down before he could perform. Oh. And the demon's just like, well, you get back up there. <laughs> I already got your soul. Let's have some fun. So yeah, there we go. Um, I am I am going to try to think of a name as uh, ridiculously exuberant as yours, though. <laughs> and I'm going to try and keep a straight face with this serious tone next to my art, like just just the best. Just I love you. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> okay, I love it. I love it. Okay, so yes, to all of those who have who have properly guessed, uh, Noir is playing a Herod. Uh, um, that will be the only Herod that we have in this group, at least at at character creation. Who knows what the what the the game will actually um, avail? Did the, but uh, did the ominous lighting give it away? Yeah, I think that might have been <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. A little bit. Um. And uh, yeah, so um, and just as a reminder or not as a reminder, but just to let you all know, these first two episodes are just going to strictly cover character creation and sort of world building and um, just sort of the internal. This is these two episodes are kind of serving as our session zero, um, which saving throw. We recommend session zeros all the time, so everybody kind of gets on the same page and knows knows where they're headed. And then the next three episodes after that will be actual gameplay where we throw all of these new characters into the world of Deadlands. So so definitely keep on watching um, all of that stuff. Uh, okay, great. Thank you, everybody. Uh, let's kind of jump into the nitty gritty a little bit. We are using a tool called Savaged US, Savaged.us, that's the site, uh, which is a hand, handy character creation tool uh, that ensures that you're kind of following all the steps and using all of your points and stuff correctly, which can sometimes be a little hard to track if you're doing it without that type of system. It makes sure you choose the edges that are appropriate for your level and the right spells for your PowerPoints and all of that stuff. It also seamlessly connects with uh, the Foundry VTT, which is the one that we'll be using later on. Uh, so if you're interested in Foundry, uh, we're, we're going to be jumping into that too, which is a first for the channel. We we do a lot in Roll20, but um, Foundry is is uh, 
supported explicitly through Pinnacle. So um, we are very excited to be jumping into Foundry as well. Uh, okay, y'all are starting out as novices. There are different levels in Savage Worlds, uh, and novice is the first. You can consider it level one, uh, for, for lack of a better term. Although it, it, it honestly encapsulates a lot more than that. Uh, and, um, in general, this is kind of where you would begin a campaign is, is at the novice level. Uh, but we will be going over, uh, advancements and leveling up. So, uh, we're not just going to start or we're going to start with novice, but we're not going to end there for sure. So if you're looking into advancements, we're going to get there. Okay, so the next choice is, in Savage Worlds, is the race of your character, uh, human or otherwise. In Deadlands, everybody's a human. Uh, even if you're a Harrowed, <laughs> you were a human in life. Uh, but check your settings rules. Different settings have different rules. Uh, it's the only option in Deadlands, but in, say, like Pathfinder or Flash Gordon, you have a, a whole range of choices. So um, everyone just note that you are human. And as a human, you get a special trait known as adaptable. Uh, humans have an innate uh, knack for learning. So uh, as a human, you get to choose one novice level edge, provided you meet the requirements, for free. So we'll get into this in a second. Um, so let me start here. Uh, so... Uh, we're going to start with Gnome and let me pull this up here. Okay, here we go. We're in Savage US right now and, um, I'm going to just input the name here. We've got Charlie. Charlie Warren, and that's Gnome. And we'll get into specifics later. You can you can always fill that in uh, a little bit later. Yeah, no Elven Gunslingers. Sorry, sorry about that. Not in this game anyway. If you want to see some Elven Gunslingers, watch our Dark Sun campaign, which everyone gets super mad about. But anyway, <laughs> uh, here we go. Okay. Um, now, uh, the race you can choose, uh, human, that's all you get. And here in Savage US, it tells you um, that these are your racial abilities, that you are adaptable and you get one free edge. Now, in Savage US, they bank that for you. So that will come up later, uh, later on so that you can, um, uh, you know, work that into your character as as you can. Uh, you see these little uh, question marks next to traits and edges. It just means, hey, you've got some stuff to spend here. We can work on this. This isn't really for you to learn Savage.us, but it does really help you build a character. Um, so uh, the next thing we're going to do is work on hindrances. So hindrances are essentially your character's flaws or limits. Hindrances serve multiple purposes in Savage Worlds. Firstly, buying a hindrance gives you points to upgrade your character at creation and only at creation. So you can't buy hindrances later on and get points to convert into edges or traits or anything like that later on. Unless you talk about it with your GM, I suppose. There's always a possibility, but... Strictly speaking, raw, you can do this at character creation. Secondly, hindrances help influence your role play and give you and your teammates something to act against and strive towards their, their character flaws. You know, they're, they are things that you might be um, trying to overcome. And so it really helps influence what you're, uh, what you're going for as a character. And lastly, hindrances often impose mechanical disadvantages to your character. Uh, I do want to note that this section in particular has some language which implies that disabilities are limitations or flaws and, well, hindrances to varying degrees. 
And while I believe the intent was to pr provide a starting point for handling some disabilities and medical conditions in game, it can instead have an opposite effect and invalidate those players who live with these issues or at times can completely misrepresent them. So what I say is read your group, talk it over, decide how you want to move forward, and if necessary, adjust. There's a lot of ways that you can kind of work around these things and make them fit into your concepts. And Savage Worlds is exceptional, exceptional, exception, exceptional, exceptional, exceptional at handling exceptional. Um, it, uh, so yeah, I, I try to avoid someone choosing, choosing disabilities. I, I, I mentioned this. I don't particularly like, um, uh, disabilities as game currency. So sometimes you'll get someone who's like, I'm going to be blind with one arm and whatever, so that I can get all the maximum points that I can get. Um, and it, that's, that's kind of defeating the purpose of, of hindrances in, in my mind. So I'm going to get off my soapbox, but if you want to read more about this, and I think it's a really fascinating subject for RPGs, but, uh, uh, Faye Onyx wrote a, a really great post addressing ableism game mechanics that treat disability as a limitation. It's on writing alchemy. You can go check it out. Um, it's really good. Anyway, I'm going to get off that soapbox. That's not why we're here, <laughs> but, but I wanted to make that, make that clear. Uh, cause I, I know that some people have come into this and go, uh, they kind of go, uh, I don't know what to do about this. And we're going to kind of work with that. Um, okay. Now. With character concepts fresh in your mind, what hindrances would you be working with or working through? Uh, and note that you can now move beyond just the core book and you, we can look into the Deadlands core book uh, as well for more hindrances to choose from. So starting with you, Gnome, what are you thinking? So I, I I I couldn't wait. I went ahead and read some of the Deadlands book, and one hindrance that really stuck out to me was lion eyes. That's a minor hindrance, and lying eyes, uh, lies just don't come easy to this hombre. That sounds all good and noble, but often causes problems when dealing with more nefarious types. A hero with this hindrance suffers a minus one penalty to all intimidation and persuasion roles, uh, where lies, even little ones, must be told. Worse, if your hero plans to make money playing poker, the penalty also applies to bluffing, and that's a minus one to your gambling rolls. Wow. Okay, so that's Lion Eyes. Lion Eyes. Very nice. Okay, so Lion Eyes is uh, a minor hindrance, and we'll get into this a little bit later as, as we develop, but there are two types of hindrances, major and minor, and they both have different mechanical effects to them. Some hindrances are only minor and some hindrances are only major. Uh, but um, yeah, so Lion Eyes is a minor hindrance uh, and um, you know what those hindrances are. Negative one, two, intimidation and persuasion roles where lies are told in addition to the gambling and all of that stuff. Okay, so you've got one minor uh, hindrance. You can select up to um, each minor hindrance gives you one point uh, to spend, one perk point to spend later on. So you can select uh, three more minor hindrances if you wanted. Uh, you could select one minor and one major hindrance. Uh, or you could just stay at Lion Eyes and not take any more hindrances if you don't want to. Oh, oh, hindrances are half the fun of this game. <laughs> I, I really, I really so think much so. Yeah. Fun. <laughs> um, I, I think another one that really popped out to me, uh, with, with the whole, especially because their name is their, their nickname, their, their reputation is known as the Big Bazoo. Um, I'm gonna, I gotta go with Big Mouth, which is oh, a minor yeah. hindrance. Loose lips, that sink ships, baby! <laughs> my favorite him, hindrance. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yep. it's so good. <laughs> my favorite hindrance. Yes, <laughs> muted, but yes, yes. No, you were, you were, you were live. Oh, I wasn't. Yeah. Oh, then no. I'm on the wrong mic. <laughs> okay, big mouth. Another minor hindrance. You're unable to keep secrets and constantly 
give away private information. That's always fun. Um, but are you telling the truth when you say that? We may yeah. never know. We may never know, though. Well, I got them lying eyes. Yeah. So... <laughs> So maybe people just don't every, listen every, every to you ever. Says truth, man. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now you can select two more minor hindrances or one major hindrance, or you can end it there. Nah, I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta go get all the points. Go I gotta go in. get the points. I gotta go all in on this. Um, one thing that I really enjoy doing when I play uh, TTRPG characters um is, I mean, a lot of folks do this. You put a little of yourself in there, and, and there are two things that I am, and I've already got these traits picked out. One, uh, we're going back to the eyes. Bad eyes. Uh, I okay. wear spectacles, which means my characters all wear spectacles of some sort. Yes. Uh, so we're definitely going to go with that, uh, which I thought was pretty interesting because it says, in a setting where glasses are available, they negate the penalty when worn. But if they're lost or broken in combat, which is like a 50% chance of happening, uh, you become distracted which is, I love that because That's, if I didn't wear my glasses, I, I literally can't see a foot in front of me without them. So I, I love that. That's that's amazing. So um, are you making that a major hindrance? I'm making it a minor hindrance. Okay. So they, they can they can still see um, enough, uh, but it's definitely illegal for them to drive uh, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> at night without wearing their glasses. OK, OK. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Okay, so without glasses, you suffer a minus one penalty to any trait role dependent on vision. Um, okay, and we'll, which is we'll... a good thing for a of a prospector. Yeah, yeah. Is <laughs> is this gold? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it, it, it sure tastes like it. What do you think? <laughs> Tell me. Brilliant. Okay, so you can choose one more minor. All right. Uh, th this uh, I, I liked this one because the the other personal trait that I'm throwing in here is y'all. I'm fat. I like playing big boys, so I'm going to take the obese, <laughs> uh, okay. the obese one. So there's there's nothing like a, a bad visioned uh, obese prospector trying to wedge through the mines, <laughs> not being able to get into some places. But it grants you a couple like benefits too, which I thought was pretty pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. It, so, it's not necessarily a full-on hindrance. There are some positives there, there to it. There are some perks to it, yeah. So your size goes up a level, um, but your pace gets lowered a level, uh, and your running die uh, is a D4 rather than a D6. So, um, yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. Another thing that, that to, to my point earlier about these things, is you can kind of... Um, uh, feel free to homebrew some of these hindrances to better reflect uh, real world um, uh, um, uh, abilities. So like you say, like, you know, if I don't have my glasses, I can't see in front of my face, maybe a minus one penalty to uh, vision rolls, maybe is not a hundred percent accurate. Maybe, maybe it means something else. Um, maybe you're, you're, you run great. You're you're a sprinter and you're fine with that. So maybe your running die doesn't need to be lowered to D4, but maybe something else gets lowered. So I I, I don't want to say that you can't like um play with these hindrances and 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 uh change them, but definitely they come into play because there's something that both GM and player can kind of like use and go, wait a minute, <laughs> what about this? And uh, and I think it, it can really have some fun effects with uh, with play playthrough. So, OK. Excellent. So we have uh, gone through uh, your hindrances. Now you have a total of four perk points available to you and uh, your perk points. You can spend these in a number of ways. You can raise an attribute. You can add an edge, you can add a skill, and you can add double your starting wealth. So raising an attribute costs two perk points. Adding an edge costs two perk points. Adding a skill costs one perk point, and doubling your starting wealth costs one perk point. So knowing this, you have four total perk points with which to spend. How would you like to spend those? 
Ooh. I, uh, the other really cool thing about Savage Worlds, y'all, is getting those edges. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta get those edges in, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, one one thing that I thought was really cool while reading, I believe this was through the the Deadlands for an edge, uh, was guts, which was really like I like the concept of like, you know, you got this short round right, who's kind of a little a little kooky, um, but like throws himself into it, like no, nothing scares him, just goes off and does it uh so i i, I think i want to give him some guts nice nice okay so uh you're going to add an edge okay uh now you can add another edge you can raise an attribute or you can do uh um you can add two skills or you can double your starting wealth Ooh, I, can I come back to that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So that, that's, yeah, that will kind of be that will remain open then. Um, and and the nice thing again about Savage US is that it will remind you, hey, you have perk points to allocate that you haven't allocated yet. So this could affect what you're choosing from here on out. So uh, absolutely. So I'm going to save this. Saving Charler Warren. Look, nothing can save Charlie Warren. Okay, <laughs> let's, let's, let's be real here. And we're, we'll come back to you. And I'm going to move over to Noir. Yeah. All here right. <laughs> All right. Here we go again. Same thing. You got uh, four. You could choose four minor hindrances, uh, two major hindrances, or any mix of them, uh, or none at all. That's. That's tough. That's for tough. All right. Um, I think the first one that I have to go with, because we're keeping it edgy and flavorful uh, and seasoned into this, uh, we're going to go with Cursed. Okay. Um, and there's already a description of it, uh, but I, I'd like to add the personal flavor of uh, he can still play music, but he can't feel it. Ooh, okay. That's so sad. I know. <laughs> I know. I was like, what's the worst thing I could do? And as a musician, that's, that's, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a part of the curse mechanic is like, if I roll a critical, I accidentally hit one of my allies. Uh, and the way that I'd like to flavor that is, he gets to feel it for just a second at the wrong time and it distracts him. It is oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that. I also love that I get an extra Benny um, at the beginning <laughs> of the game. So that's going to be fun. I I was torn on this next one because I almost took another major one. Okay. Uh, but then, I, then there's like a minor one that I want. So yeah. I have to forego that and uh the minor one that i'm going to take is vengeful vengeful yes okay all right so we'll get into your backstory a little bit i think in in, mm -hmm. in episode two but but vengeful i i love vengeful i think uh i i had vengeful um on one of my characters and um it it played super heavily into <laughs> things that I did. And it's such a fun hindrance to play and, and just really speaks to your character, right? It's, it's, yeah. so, it's so much fun to play. Um, ugh, I love, I love these hindrances. Okay. Um, okay. So you have one more minor if you want. Yep. I, and I'm taking it because, yeah. uh, I, 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 I love, I love this stuff. Uh, so, uh, my last one is going to be secret. Ooh. Um, uh, it, of course, the secret is uh, the deal he made at the crossroads and all the details of it. Uh, and like with any good deal, I feel like there is a way for a third party to interfere in that deal, which would hamper him greatly. OK. OK. That's amazing. All right. We'll get into what secret 
deal you made um, a little bit later, uh, just you and I. <laughs> um, <laughs> but... Can you, can you hear the My Chemical Romance as we start talking about <laughs> yeah, this? Just, I, I see the black and white leaves falling, and yeah, it, it's, 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 it's really sad. Um, and I see my, through no fault of my own, you, you players, you just see my camera, but, but the people at home see my other camera where the green screen is slowly fading out. <laughs> it's like sunset as the sun is setting. Let me see if I can bump it up a little. <laughs> it added a, like a nice misty vibe to the background. I, you I got know. There. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, did you customize it just for me? <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> um, all right. Okay, so you have four perk points available. Where would you like to spend those perk points? And oh. like Gnome, you can uh, save that for when we get into it. Because I find personally when I'm going and choosing things, sometimes it makes sense to kind of hop around a little bit and, and look at your traits and edges and then come back and, you know, add, uh, add uh, things in certain places. But maybe you have an I idea. No, I respect that, but uh, you got to be out of your mind if you think I'm going to miss out on something called age. <laughs> I'm so sorry. All right, um, let's take Do a look it. at some of these. Um, first yeah. off, the the one that I liked uh, for him is fame. Uh, he's a little. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I I think it's like famous among musicians, so it's like. The not actually famous, but musicians know of his skill. You're like a yeah. you're like a studio musician where uh, oh, people, people are like, oh yeah, no, you're great. It's, you you played. It's like Sugarfoot. And... Yeah, like <laughs> you know you know you talk to a musician if they know who Sugarfoot is. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. I love that. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so you have two more points available. Oh yeah, I do. Okay. Uh... Come back to me. <laughs> I'm so okay. Sorry. No, 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 no. That's that's perfect. Okay, so we're saving you. Okay. Now, Megan, you've heard a little bit about these other folks. I have. I have indeed. Um, let's see here. Uh let's see. Going for hindrances, we've got cursed and big mouth and lion eyes. Um, oh, and Trouble Magnet sure would be fun with Cursed and Trouble Magnet in there. Uh, which Trouble Magnet? Basically, just... yeah, you, you're you're guaranteeing that you'll be the one getting hit if Cursed yeah. ever <laughs> critically fails. Oh gosh, that would be bad news. Um, yeah, I'm still. Uh, I still have such an itch to play a witch. Um, yeah, do it. We don't have any magic users yet. So, yeah, I think I'm going to go that way. Um, I love it. And yeah, I just, uh, they're just too much fun. Yeah. Um, okay. So, I, but I would like to play an eccentric witch who lives by herself um, in the woods and all of her little witchy things. Um, so, looking at hindrances. Hmm. Uh, I would love to do de delusional. I have never played with delusional, and that sounds like fun to me. <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, I love it. Um, you y'all are going to be like the weirdest party where everyone's seeing things and talking to people that aren't there, and and just just yes. talking. <laughs> yes, this. This witch has a ghost that follows her and she converses with them often. That's, I love that. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, are you using delusional as a minor or major hindrance? Um, uh, let me see here. So in really something strange cause occasional and frequent trouble. So the major I'm assuming pull that up um is like gives me bigger negatives i don't remember what those negatives are let's see i've gone too far <laughs> yes I, i'm feeling major major okay great 
Yeah. I mean, if you've got a ghost that you're talking to, it's probably pretty yeah. major. You're probably pretty, yeah, pretty far gone. Right. With that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm feeling. Great. Okay. You have uh, two points left. So you could do one more major or two minor, or like I said, you could end it there and not get any more points. But um, Let's see here. I would, I always like to have more hindrances as well. This is way more fun to me. Chat is having fun with the delusional witch reference. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, good, good. <laughs> Uh, this is the witch. way it should be. <laughs> Delusional Witch is, is my Susie and the Banshees cover band. That's probably my favorite. <laughs> Thank like you, Oh, um, Let's go with... Um, oh. Uh, oh. I love all thumbs as well. Um, but I'm trying to see it's like it's mechanical electrical devices. So I don't know. I don't know that I, I guess mechanical would work here, but I don't know that I think she's going to be using a lot of that. So I won't do that. Okay. Um, but I think I will do um, suspicious. Ooh. Okay. All right. Uh, and are you doing this as a minor or major hindrance? Minor. So okay. I'll do one more hindrance uh, beyond that. Um, let's see. I always end up, well, oh, I do love doing all major hindrances all the time. I always feel like all my favorite are major hindrances. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know. I know. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I, I will say you can pick as many major and minor hindrances as you want for your character, but you can only benefit, uh, for a total of four points. So, so how we've broken it out here before, uh, that that's all you get points wise, but you, if you want to add more and more hindrances to your character, you are more than welcome to, you just don't get any mechanical benefit for doing so. Okay. Let's see when the day is when someone tries to play every hindrance at once. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh goodness. Um, I'm going to do overconfident. Overconfident. Okay. Yeah. So two major and a minor in this instance. Okay. Oh, two, two major and a minor. Okay, so, okay, great. All right, no problem. Okay, so you have four perk points available. Do you know where you'd like to spend those yet? Um, I would like to spend those. Um, hmm, that's a good question. Um, my my go-to is to raise one attribute and add an edge. Um, that's probably what I think I'm going to do. That'll, cause that'll give me two edges to start. Right. Because that's, yeah. With the human adaptable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll do that. So you're going to add it. Sorry. Add an edge or raise an edge. I, I, add I, an edge. Add an edge. And then great. for my second one, raise an attribute. And raise an attribute. Great. Yeah. So you will get two edges at character creation cause you are human. So you get to add an edge for free and then you are choosing to add another edge um uh, to this perfect mm -hmm. great uh, yes all right um do you have a name for your a name yes names are the hardest hold on let me find a, a witch name generator and one witch name <laughs> generator right here and uh oh yeah fantasy name generator is the best and oh okay I, it's one of the first things that came up it's so ridiculous i'm gonna go with it her name is crystal void <laughs> <laughs> i'm so here for this <laughs> <laughs> saving crystal void yes yes <laughs> uh that's that's a movie in the making um <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I just really, really quick want to pause and welcome. There's a lot of new faces here. We, uh, I love seeing everybody old, old and new alike coming in here. Uh, people who have been catching up on wild cards, uh, and watching all of that series. Uh, y'all are amazing. Thank you for, for continuing to watch that. Um, and, um, yeah, glad to have you all here. Uh, and, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for the support. Those of you who are subscribing and tipping uh, and doing all that on Ko-Fi, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Okay, moving on. Hmm. Uh, let me see here. Where are we at? Okay, um. so 
yes. So again, hindrances, major and minor. Uh, they can be either major or minor. They result in different mechanical effects. We covered a lot of this, but also these determine your starting perk points. We've covered all of that. So, um, next, let's see. Okay. Next up, yes. I'm going to uh, go back over to uh, Charlie Warren. You've had a chance to think about things. We're going to go over to your traits. So as you can see, savage.us uh, is showing uh, that you have attribute allocations to spend and skill allocations to spend. Um, this is because you chose some of these things at the start. Uh, but um, we kind of want to go through and sort of flesh out your character just a little bit more. So we are going to cover your traits. Um, and those are your attributes skills. So if you're familiar with D&D, which many people are probably going to be coming to Savage Worlds from D&D, uh, these are your strength, dexterity, constitution, etc. Um, ability scores. But rather than being uh, um, a score that translates into bonuses or negatives, your traits and their subsequent skills are uh, represented by specific die types. So D4, D6, D8, etc. Um, traits are passive abilities, whereas the skills that they represent are active uh that's kind of the difference between the two so in D, D, there's a lot of times where you'll be doing like a strength check and that's what you you just roll your strength check uh and savage worlds has a very similar system to that um where if something is passively happening to you it's going to affect your traits your overall traits whereas if you are actively doing something it's going to require a skill that you have um we will cover the skills in a minute uh maybe this episode probably this episode uh we have we have a lot of time because we're down one player that we didn't have to create so <laughs> we're, we're we're kind of zooming fast but um uh we can now take points that you all allocated during your hindrance selection and we can boost attributes if that's what you chose. Uh, and then we can kind of go into skill selection a little bit later. Um, but right now, we're going to just cover your, your traits, your, your abilities. So uh, the um, five traits are agility, smarts, spirit, strength, and vigor. Um, and those roughly equate agility is dexterity it's your speed it's um uh your hand-eye coordination that type of stuff um smarts your brains uh it's your intelligence score spirit is kind of your wisdom score after a fashion but it's it's honestly it's more um for lack of a better term it's more spiritual than that it it, it encompasses a lot more of the metaphysical than necessarily what you know um, or have known. Um, strength is pretty self-explanatory, and your vigor is kind of uh, can equate to a, a constitution role um, or uh, something along those lines. It, it's it's essentially your um, uh, how uh, durable <laughs> you you are, uh, and there are no skills associated with strength or vigor uh, so those are always passive skills but um, your other traits have skills associated with them so um no where would you like to allocate things all right um well i, I definitely want to make sure that i've got some spirit Okay, so you start with a D4 in all of these. So mm -hmm. you can you can move up um, uh, however. And um, to it, it costs one point to move up one die type. Okay. Uh, and then if you want to move up another die type, I believe that costs another point. Am I remembering that right, Megan? 
Let me let me consult with the the book. Savage U.S. would definitely tell me. Just specifically in the attributes. Yes. Is that what you're saying? I yeah. believe so. Yeah. I believe it's just point per attribute. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you can have. I, or, I do think in some, depending, I think there's a rule where you can't have a starting die type above like a D8, but I think that might be a setting rule. Right. Yeah, D6s are average for for your attributes. Um, and yeah, just like we are like you and we are learning or relearning the system so we're going to be nose deep into rule books sometimes and that's what that's just what happens but um let me see here yeah i'm pretty sure yeah so let me see here Um, okay, so you have uh, five points to increase your attributes. Uh, raising a d4 to a d6, for example, costs one point. Uh, you're free to spend these points however you like, except that no attribute may ever be raised above a d12 unless a racial ability says otherwise. Uh, if it does, each increase beyond a D12 adds a plus one modifier. None of you are going to be uh, D12 um, here starting off. Um, so don't worry about that. But you have five points to spend for your attributes. And let me double check here. I don't think... Yeah, you, did, you have not selected any uh, attribute points. So... Five is all you've got right now, although you can always, yeah. if you want to add change that, you can. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead, and, and like I said, I, I definitely want to raise spirit to a D6. Okay. Spirit, D6. Great. Yeah. Um, I would love to raise strength and vigor... Uh, strength to a d6. Okay. And I think uh, vigor to a d8 okay. is the next one. Up. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I so think that eats up all my points. That's one, two, three, four. I think that's four points. I think you have one more point. Oh, I got one more? Okay. Um, I believe so. Let's see. I definitely I'm not I'm not thinking that they're going to be a very agile feller uh by by intent um but I I don't uh, uh, do I do I go up with vigor or, or do I go up with strength so um uh vigor is going to directly um affect your um uh, your toughness so right. um uh, the higher the vigor, the higher your toughness will be. Mm -hmm. Strength, if you're fighting hand-to-hand -hand combat or are using like a melee weapon of some kind, a mm -hmm. higher strength is going to add to your damage bonuses. Okay. Um, so that that can be nice to have. Um, agility, uh, I, I would say to raise agility only because um, there are a lot of skills under there that definitely come in handy specifically fighting uh and it's harder to raise a skill above your attribute generally mm -hmm. your your skills uh so if you have a d4 in agility uh you can't have higher than a d4 in any of the relevant skills below that unless you spend extra points when you are taking your advance there's um, there's yeah. no dump stat in Savage World. <laughs> yeah, 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 I, yeah, I, yeah, exactly, exactly. All the, all the stat, and one of the things I really like about the system is that all of the stats uh, are are necessary. Um, 
but uh, I, I, I don't think there's any reason why not to spend or why you have to spend points into anything. Um, so I, I'm just telling you, you might want to think about it, but you don't have to. I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of thinking what, like how, how is, how is our witch gonna, like stack up their dice? How, how is our, our, our Swiss Army knife gonna stack up their dice? I feel like they're a bit more intelligent than Charlie is, so I don't know. I don't know if like they're like. Oh, I think I'm just gonna go with vigor. Okay. I think I'm yeah. gonna make them a hearty little bastard. <laughs> I love it. I love like, it. Like, like, like they're, they're they're not a tank, but man, they could take a hit. I mean, <laughs> his his name is Big Bazoo. He's got to be able to <laughs> yeah. roll. The I ain't hear no bell. <laughs> I can't hear you back. No but... I'm in a wooden teeth I got. I just make more. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Okay, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, um, you know, since we're here and we have time, uh, we'll we'll cover skills along with with uh, your uh, attributes. So, um, let's just go over the skills and and what skills you think you have. Uh, one of the things that I really love about the system is that every facet of character creation feeds into your um who you are who you're playing and uh everything that you choose is a, a just a huge component of that and uh and it all has mechanical benefits as well as story benefits and rp benefits so um so thinking about that um where would you like to to spend points for um for your skills and Again, I would note that you do have uh, perk points to allocate for that. Yeah, and, and I'm so sorry. It was, how many points was it? Uh, you have. Let me get that really quick here. I think for, it's for skills. 12. Is it? Isn't it? Yeah. I know. I can't remember if it's 10 or 12. It's 12. It's you start 12. with 12. Yeah. Um, okay. And uh, again, you cannot raise a skill above 12 uh, mm -hmm. when you, at, at character creation. Um, and each die type again costs one point, um, as long as the skill is equal to or less than the uh, attribute it's linked to. So, okay. if you want to raise, say, fighting to a D six, you're going to have to pay double points to get it to that. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's that's what you got. All right. Let's um, let's let's start with spirit. Uh, I definitely want to dump points into focus. Okay. I feel like I feel like Charlie's got to drive. Ch Charlie's got Charlie's got thoughts. Charlie's got motivation. Uh, and it's so, not necessarily in faith or anything like that. And and I already get uh, a a minus for intimidation and performance. Um. So I think focus, we're gonna go up. Um let's 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 boost that to at least a D6 right now. Okay. Before we get too far into this. Okay. Focus technically has no mechanical uh value outside of an arcane background. So it's it's basically used to determine the power points that you'll get. Um, for some specific arcane backgrounds, which use focus as their basis. Um, oh, so gotcha. it's not like it's not like if you're working on something, you'll roll focus to be you know super hyper mm -hmm. um, concentrating on that. Um, however, the system is pretty flexible in that regard. So if you wanted, if if you're thinking like the character can become really highly focused on something, like we can use that and you know you can roll that instead um mm -hmm. one, a, a question that we got off of twitter was um how does the skill system differ from other games and um does it lead to less specialized characters and that was from bill roper thank you for your question and uh, i'll say this now is that um you can actually yes these these are there are general skills like the boating skill is very general it it can encompass 
every single kind of boat. Uh, but you can specify um, there are uh, uh, basically knowledge skills that you can add that are more specific about things. So if your character only knows about submarines, you can add knowledge submarines. So they have a general idea of, of boats, maybe, but they have a specific knowledge of submarines. And so whenever you encounter a submarine, you would roll a submarine roll, but anything else you would roll for a boating. Similarly, with focus, we can homebrew that to be to mean something more specific. Um, and uh, I, I'm down for that, but uh, if you want to spend it somewhere else, that's totally fine. So, so hear, hear me out, hear me, hear me out. Here's, here's some bullshittery. Talk to me a little more about this ghost rock. Like if somebody spends way too much time around ghost rock, how 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 much more aware do they become to to the arcane like i still have an edge to pick right. uh if i wanted to pick an edge and i could pick arcane background and not going too deep into it because i don't want to cross over to like to the witch right but talk talk to me a little bit more about this ghost rock I'm not, I'll just say, I'm not too worried about crossover. If, if like it happens, it's totally cool. There's a lot of room in this system for doubling up by all means. If you don't want to, please, please. I totally hear you, but just, just making sure it won't hurt my feelings. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so exposure to ghost rock is never a good thing. Um, and in fact, you can get something called ghost rock fever which um, uh, instills some pretty heavy uh, disadvantages to you. Um, uh, however, um, this is part of the world building that we can sort of kind of create, is that we can kind of make it so that exposure to ghost rock, if you've been mining it for a long time, you might have a slightly better chance at uh, acknowledging the spiritual world in some way and so maybe you have some latent arcane ability that you um can can tap into basically uh it, it may not be much uh and honestly you may pick it now and pick like one spell and then never deal with it again as you advance uh and it's just that one specific thing that you want to focus on but um yeah, yeah, you can do that. Uh, I would say it, it. look at the arcane backgrounds that you can choose because not all of them use uh, focus. Uh, basically, uh, Savage Clint mentioned that focus is primarily used by uh, the Chi Master. Um, so if you want to do martial arts type stuff and be good at that, uh, then you could use focus, which you can kind of channel your key energy into different things, kind of like a monk uh, in D and D. But um, yeah, so that's certainly something you can do. There's also weird science, which uh, you can, you know, use ghost rock to power sort of infernal devices and, and different things. Um, maybe the glasses that you use to see better are ghost rock glasses and uh, they allow you to see at night, you know, or something like that. Uh, and so you could you could certainly do something like that. Uh, although there is there's always a negative with Ghost Rock, and there's always a chance that devices can malfunction. And when they malfunction, they malfunction big. And uh, you don't want to you don't want to crit fail when you're using a device like that. So um, or do you? Or do you? Uh, oh, I don't know. Don't figure it out, yo. Uh, all right. So 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 I think I think I'm gonna switch up my attribute then of spirit back down to a D4 and my smarts up to a D6. Okay. And then might go i i'm i'm liking this I'm, I'm liking this potential this danger of of ghost rock exposure uh and 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 i think i'm gonna go do some weird science 
Oh, I love I it. I think okay. I'm going to do some weird science with this. Okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll make a note here that you are going to dabble in weird science as your as an arcane background. So um, let's real quick jump back over to your hindrances. So you chose to add a edge. So you yes. you will have two edges to choose from. We're not to edges yet, so we're not to arcane backgrounds mm-hmm. yet. But you're already thinking ahead and, and thinking you want to do weird science. Perfect. I love this. Uh, okay. So um, just remember you have another, you can either choose another edge, raise an attribute point, uh, or um, double your starting wealth, or add a couple of skills. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, or you know points to skills basically yeah so just remember that you still have that okay now you have a d4 in agility a d6 in smarts d4 in spirit d6 in strength and a d10 in vigor you you are a tough some a bitch um all right now looking at the skills now and and thinking ahead about arcane backgrounds and such like that where would you like to uh, add some skills? I think you're. I'm muted. There you uh, go. Yeah. I'm, I was, <laughs> I'm blowing this up because I I can't read. <laughs> uh, like Charlie, my glasses yeah. only see so good. <laughs> so good. Uh, let's see. Um. Bum, ba, da, ba, 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 do, 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 do. So I think we're gonna bump up survival up okay. to a d uh, a d six. Okay. Because that's something that I, I feel like a prospector would be really good at. Yeah. Got to be able to survive out there at least averagely. Um, weird science. I'm gonna want to bump up to d six. Yeah, we'll do a d. We'll do a d six for now. Okay. But I might use two points to go up to a d eight. Mm-hmm. Let's go ahead and just do that. We'll go okay. ahead and do that for now. All right. You have six points left. Okay. Uh, let's do, 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 do. Oh, this is so tough. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, this is just the beginning. And as you advance, you'll... And as you play together, you're going to start getting the feeling for how your characters all sort of can connect and, and play and synergize with each other. Mm-hmm. So so the beginning is not the end. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's bump up Taunt. I feel like I'm building like a tank. Yeah. <laughs> right now. Taunt, taunt is great that uh, because there are some edges that that give you some bonuses in that um and, yeah. and allow you to kind of kind of pull focus yeah great all yeah right, five points all right we got five points so let's go ahead if um, if if i may um mm-hmm. yeah please um I, I first I want to say that uh, in Savage Worlds Adventure Edition, there are core um, skills that you have uh, athletics, uh, notice, common knowledge, persuasion and stealth. OK, uh, all of those start at a D4 automatically, so you don't have to put any points into those. OK, um, you can raise them, obviously, but you but you get those automatically for free. Everyone gets those for free. Mm -hmm. Um, In Deadlands, it might be a good idea to take um, either fighting or shooting or both uh, if you plan on doing any of those things. Because if you are rolling uh, without the skill, you're rolling a D4 minus one, I think. So yeah, I believe so. You're always going to be at a disadvantage mm-hmm. doing any of those things. Anytime you're rolling a skill that you don't have, you're rolling at a disadvantage. So you might as well take some of these things, even if you're like, I'm not the sharpshooter. I'm not, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it is helpful to have. Additionally, in Deadlands, it's nice to have the writing skill 
Because if you're hopping on a horse, you're going to want that. Megan and I know very well what it means to not have the writing skill. (laughs) Yeah. Um, That's going to hurt. Yeah. Ooh, that's so, that's so tough. Um, I I do like fighting, so it, it, it'll cost two points, right, to go up in fighting. It would cost two points, yes. Yeah, so let's go ahead and do that, because I, I imagine, like, as far like, it, it, there's no way that you want this guy to hold a gun. <laughs> I just can't imagine Charlie uh, being one of those that are out there doing some shooting. But man, can he swing that pickaxe? So, uh, so, um, okay. So you want, uh, Charlie to have a D six in fighting. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. And then was, was that three, three points left? You have four, uh, sorry. You have two points left. Two points left. Okay. Um, boom, 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 boom. And yes, chat, Ted is letting me know. It's a D four minus two. Oof. If you do not have the skill. So, Oof. Yeah. <laughs> ouch yeah ouchies it's so it in in savage worlds this is a little we'll probably cover this again later as we get into gameplay but a success is a four uh on the die so mm-hmm. um on a d4 you have basically one chance to succeed unless you have bonuses in it uh, some through an edge or something like that um but regardless it's a four to hit a success so at a d4 minus two you're Almost it's guaranteed auto- not to succeed yeah. at that. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, dang. That's so. Oh, the decision. Right. Oh. It can happen. That's the one thing that's nice because you can yes. always lose your dice. Yes. Yes. It can happen. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. We'll we'll definitely be talking about acing or exploding dice. Um, yeah. A, a little bit later, because yeah, that's awesome. And yes, you do always have your wild die. I love oh, this yeah, yeah. Um, wild die. Yeah. Um uh we're we're, we're going to cover wild dies later uh after yeah. the vacation. but uh okay, let's think about this. Um you're a prospector. You go digging, right? Mm-hmm. Um you would probably know um Would trade maybe be a good one? Trade might be a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see. Here. Is trade a new one? Clint, where are you? (laughs) (laughs) I'm making things difficult for you now. I'm sorry. (laughs) Um, Let's go off to the DP to give you spell casting. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can give you trade. I don't know what it does, but we could give you trade. Uh, you know what? Let's do it. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's do trade. Let's, 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 let's double up on trade. It's okay. It's new to Deadlands. Okay. Thank you. Yes. It's a, it's a Deadlands specific skill. Um, ah. uh, so I'll, I'll pull that up in, in, in the Deadlands book in a minute, but, uh, yeah. So I, I, I feel like trading is really important. And yeah. if, if, if Charlie can't lie then he's, he's going to be straight up honest and that's a good reputation. So I th- I'm going to double up on it. I'm going to put that to a D six. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, I'm clicking on the wrong thing. Trade, I, th- I think, I think that's what we're going to do. Yeah. All right. And that's, yeah, those are your skills. Okay. Yep. Yeah. There are a million ways that you could choose to go. You could choose healing and and have a, a bit of, you know, uh, healing opportunities, gambling, all the research, science. People are suggesting science because maybe you can tell, you know, the geology of something or something like that. But I like this. I like this build. <laughs> <laughs> and i and think I, I get that it's not a min max build yeah but I, exactly it, it, y'all don't know me yet and i don't care about min maxing i yeah. will bullshit my way through everything so, so i'm the same way yes exactly and and i think so savage worlds and, and in my mind you can you can absolutely min max characters if you want to it's it's hard to do that at character creation because you don't really know your party role yet 
you know kind of where you want to be. Uh, and Savage Worlds is so swingy with roles that you may be the the guy that's you know that wants to be the um uh the well in my experience he wants to be the guy that that gets his shots off and is able to you know hit his targets and um when you can't do that when your roles are bad and are not getting it like you are useless to your party if you've maxed out your character to do that one thing and your dice don't let you do that one thing <laughs> it's it's hard it's rough and so Savage Worlds is is built really well to um, compensate for that uh, by by encouraging a more minimized character build rather than maxing it. Because, yes, if you do max your character and you hit and you, you know, you do a lot of damage and you can take out a lot of guys at once and stuff, it does happen. But when it doesn't, oh, man, it's rough. And so, yeah, having I, I love having these characters that that are honestly trying to find their their space and what they are doing and uh it makes for a a, a lot of fun uh, i don't know why S -S stream elements timed out clint i don't know why that's that's silly clint was doing nothing wrong i'm sure well are we sure that are we sure i don't know clint, are we what sure? are we doing? jody can you check on <laughs> clint, please something yeah. Okay. So those are your skills. Uh, great. That's that's amazing. Okay. So let's uh, let's say. Oh, do you want to uh, allocate your perk points yet? Your other perk points. So you have two uh, two perk points left. No, because I'm gonna save that for an uh, another edge. Okay. So so um. So that I can get um arcane. So background. you have already allocated two points for an edge. So you have two left. So do you want to add another edge to that? Because you already yeah, well, I want double edges. Well, you already get two be edges. Because no you're because you're a hu <laughs> because you're a human because you're a human. You you get an extra edge anyway. Oh, at that's creation. right. And then you also chose to allocate two of your perk points to adding an edge. So you already have two edges to choose okay. from. So you can certainly add another edge and get three edges in oh. character creation, which is pretty damn good. Or you can upgrade another couple of skills or yeah. get more money or um or let me let me save game. that. Let me save that for now. We're gonna bank that for now. I also okay. like to point out this is the first time I have ever played a fantasy game as a human. Yeah. <laughs> Normally I play small folk, gnomes, hobbits, halflings, kenders, or extremely tall folk. Like so this is this is this is weird for me. I'm a human. It's a human. Yeah. Or you could be short as a human. I mean there's, there's nothing. Oh yo, Charlie is absolutely short and stout. Yeah. That's a that's a pure <laughs> short round right there. Yeah. Paul is short. The thing that matters is that you <laughs> Yeah. Uh um, okay, so uh, uh, you do have to spend these points before the end of character creation. So just you can't you can't add them later. So, so oh, okay, okay, yeah. Um, yeah. Let me let me go flip through the book. Yeah. Uh, while somebody else maybe is going, and then I'll Perfect. I'll get back to you on that. Okay. All right. Uh, we move from Charlie Warren, and uh, let's go over to our Harold. Um, yeah, I've got my name. Okay. I've got my name now. What is your name? Uh, I go by the name of Fellow King. Ooh, I love that. Okay, a fellow The power, king. Noir, the power. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Just that. in case nobody was sure how blacky AF. <laughs> <laughs> yes, King. Um, all right. So you also have two points, two perk points that you have not spent yet. Do you know yes, if you I, want to allocate those? I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to be as edgy as I thought that I've seen how, how this goes a little. Uh, I would like to raise up uh, my agility. Okay, so we're going with an attribute. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Uh, and Let's that, see. That's so, it. That's all. Those okay. are all the points that you can allocate there. So cool, cool, cool. now you have 
uh, six attribute points with which to spend uh, rather than the five that everyone else gets. So where would you like to put those attributes? I want to start with uh, agility. So okay. I would. So it costs one point for each die increase, correct? Yes, correct. Um, dang, that's going to be... You know, I, I pretty much d- devoted myself to this. Uh, we're going with a D8 in agility. Okay. Um, reason being is uh, I kind of figured out how I want this guy to go. Uh, I want him. I want. I want maximum spooky. And the the best way to get spooky is to just appear behind people. Oh, yeah. So, so uh, I'll, uh, the, we're, we're going to do a lot of stealthing, um, and uh, oof, boy, I, I'm 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 really devoting myself to this. We're going to go a D8. That's right. I'm dumping it to only two attributes. I know it's dumb, but we ain't been back in here. We're going for theme. <laughs> and theme is and it. That, and that's going to go into spirit. Okay. A D8 so into spirit. We, yep. Um, so you have two more points. Oh, snap. I will. This. I, I didn't expect this. <laughs> I did math good. All right. Um, <laughs> Like I know, I should probably show some love to like strength or vigor or whatever. Uh, what did vigor do again? Is that the hit points? V- yeah, vigor's basically your hit points. So in Savage Worlds, you don't really have hit points. Every every character has essentially three hit points. Um, oh, okay. Uh, so it doesn't matter. You can be the big bad of everything, and you're only going to have three hit points. You can be, you know, the most advanced character, and you've only got three hit points. Uh, Vigor is basically your toughness. So basically, uh, when characters try to hit you, they have to get over that toughness to, uh, or sorry, over your parry, right? But if they're um, if they're shooting you from a distance, they have to get over your toughness, right? Mm, it's toughness. been a while. It's been a while since I've savaged. It, it, since if you're since if you're I've shooting, it just hits a four. That's right. Unless they're standing right next to you and shooting, then, then you, you have, have to then hit then your you have parry. To hit beat the parry that's right yeah yeah unless yeah but yeah your 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 toughness is going to make you harder to oh it's it's uh it's sorry it's for damage basically so oh, okay. um, for strength wait that's is that vigor. what you're talking about vigor for uh, toughness oh. the toughness so the toughness relegates yep. the damage that you take okay uh and so like mm, mm. All right, because uh, at some point with when I get another age, I did see the hard to kill, uh, and I you know I kind of want him to appear to be like very zombie like where you can shoot him. And I want oh, him yeah. to be like a, I want him to be like Jason essentially. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, Harrods, Harrods, Jason. <laughs> yeah, Harrods are are by their nature very very hard to kill um anyway but i I, i'm not going to stop you from taking that edge because that's perfect and i love that that lore so any but vigor i i do always recommend vigor because having a higher toughness is always helpful um i'm gonna put one point in vigor okay and then i am going to put this is this is tough because there's a lot of useful skills in agility but he started off as a musician, so we're gonna put that extra point uh, in spirit. Okay. So that's a D ten in spirit then. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. There we go. All right. So um, that's a pretty good spread. Uh, so where would you like to uh, allocate your skill points? You have 12 skill points. All right. So, <laughs> um, man, I want him to be the most spookiest boy. Um, <laughs> uh, so we're going to put two points immediately into stealth. Like that's, he's got to be, he's got to be spooky. Um, Great. We're going to put three points into performance one two three um i mean because he didn't start off as a killer so i'm not imagining like he's immediately good at that he's gonna get there don't worry uh-huh. folks yeah we go we go figure out how to murder but we're not there yet um 
we're gonna put one point in the writing. He was a traveling musician, so you know you gotta you gotta do that. Makes sense. Um, and also, he was a traveling musician, so probably two points in fighting. <laughs> I, all those saloon brawls that you've, you've gone into. Yeah, you know, one person yells bar fight, and then yeah. it's mandatory that everybody has to fight after that. Well, that's right. That's right. <laughs> um, let's see. That's how many so, points have I used? So you got four points left. And, oh, four. And, Chat, chat does point out that there are some helpful skills here. Um, uh, notice is is super helpful. Basically, that's your perception. So, mm. um, hey, shout out to you, chat. You a real boy. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and put two points into notice. Um, now I have okay. Four that's points. you are you are out of skill points. Oh, never mind, man. Yeah, because you only had a D four in smarts, so uh, going up to D a D eight is going to take mm -hmm. more points to, to go for, for notice. Okay, so in that case, can I just put one point in notice? Sure. Um, and you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to spoil myself and put one more in stealth. <laughs> okay. I'm a real spooky boy. <laughs> Great. Perfect. Okay. Great. So I've got nothing... Uh, nothing coming against me here in savage.us so everything looks good to me hey uh, so we will save that and we will move over to our witch okay crystal crystal void hello yes um let's see so um we are doing traits attributes now yep um I often like to kind of start everything at a D6. Okay. And so, then move it up and down from there. Okay, let's do that okay. then. So everything at a D6 right now. Okay, so you have uh you have one skill point with which you could use. Um, but like you were saying, if you want to lower another thing and raise another yeah. thing, that will give you points back and all that. Okay, I'm going to raise my smarts to a D8. Um, and I'm going to lower my strength to a D4 because I don't think she's a strength person. And I'm going to up... Mm, I'm going to... Uh, okay, I'm going to up my spirit to a D8. Okay. I'm going to lower my vigor to a D4. Oof. Okay. And I'm going to up my agility to a D8. She's weak. But maybe a little crafty. <laughs> crafty? But weak. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Those are your attribute points. Now let's look at uh, your uh, skills. So skills. Okay. Where, where are you thinking with, with old Crystal um, Void? I definitely want her to be good at spell casting, so I would go ahead and punch that to a D8. Okay. Um, I'm going to make her notice a D6. Okay. Ooh, I'm going to give her one healing because I think she has to at least tend to her own wounds. Mm, mm -hmm. Nobody's around except her ghost friend. <laughs> and he's not helping. That makes sense. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to take stealth. She's probably a little sneaky. Um, I'm going to take... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put one point in fighting for now. I might bump that up, but I think she... She has to, to get by. Ooh, definitely survival. Okay. She's got, I'm going to say two, I'm going to put two points in and make that a D6. Sorry, if I'm going too fast, don't. No, I'm you're, just, you're, <laughs> you're, I'm sorry. You, you just tell me and I'll click it. It's easy for me. Okay. Savage US makes it easy. Um. It does. Savage <laughs> US helped me understand how to build a character, um, which yes. was really, really helpful. Five, five foot Latinas, the turbo tax of character creation. <laughs> yes. uh, yes. <laughs> hi, five foot Latina. Um, uh, I would like to put some points in a cult. How many points? I'll would put you it. Put I'll put. Let me see. I uh, I feel like I should put two. Okay. Uh, you have one point left. Oh, only one. Okay, I'm gonna do um um oh man. Okay, I'm gonna do a point in performance. Okay. 
Well, none of you have put points into persuasion. This is or that's going to be pretty <laughs> fun. Um, okay. Who wants to persuade? Yeah, yeah. We when, just when, intimidate when does that ever them. Come <laughs> and um, or shooting chat points out. Yeah, that's interesting. Good thing yeah. we have a fourth player, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. We'll, see, we'll see what 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 Rachel <laughs> wants to play, but yeah. Uh, okay. You you feeling good with those uh, skills? Uh, yeah, yeah. I definitely have more I want to do, but I'll I'll save that for some advances. So. Okay. All right. I mean, who needs shooting when you could just sucker punch everybody to death? <laughs> right. And if it's hard for you to die, why not? <laughs> It's oh the my most goodness. party ever. <laughs> <laughs> just oh, rolled in the and knocked everybody out. <laughs> oh, uh. I love it. I love it. I love it so much. Let's see if I can get this light to stay. No. There. Okay. Oh, yeah. I didn't put any in writing. True, true. This makes sense, though. I don't... Well, we'll see. I never had writing before for any of my characters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that was fine. Yeah. Yeah. Leave it to somebody else. Someone else. Yeah, you ride. <sighs> um okay. Uh amazing, amazing, amazing. Um uh we have we have about 20 minutes or so left. I want to quick turn back to chat and see if any of you all have uh questions or comments or concerns about um the uh the system so far that you that you have questions about that you want us to try to to answer civil savage says no one took a d12 in boating no boating no boating here no boating in deadlands i don't know why but i feel like we failed chat with not having boating like, well, i don't know what the history is behind that but i'm, I'm sorry <laughs> there's <laughs> It was yeah. a whole thing. There was a uh, yeah. It was a whole thing. It was a whole thing. Um, Silly boating. Uh, let me see here if I can pop into pop into chat really quick and <laughs> see if y'all have anything. Oh, got a few toasts on deck. Uh, whew. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, let me pull those up. Hope we get toast. We get toast. We toast. toast. Yeah, toast. toast. Wasn't that a song? Kelly. Wasn't that a song? <laughs> Might have been. Might I think it was. it was. Like some comedian had a whole song. That was their thing. It's just about toast. I believe it. I was thinking, I was thinking butter toast, man. <laughs> Toes, man. Yes. yes i'm here for that uh uh thank you so much uh, everybody who has uh subbed up on on ko-fi or or sent in tips really appreciate it we do have four toasts to go over so if you have a drink of choice please raise it with me uh as as we read some toasts um after we read all the toasts we'll give a hearty yeehaw uh, the first toast comes from uh, Neva and Omar. Uh, Amy, yay! Saving throw, and yay! Savage Worlds! We love y'all! <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Soon Raccoon says, to atone for my weak trolling in chat. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, I, I, I will say, I will say, I let you through with that one. It's fifteen dollars for a toast, and you only did five. I'm letting you. I'm letting you buy on that one, just because it was such weak trolling in chat. I needed to call it out again. Monstrosity <laughs> Jones. I don't know much about no ghosts or rocks. It's true. It's true. Mm. Uh, Kenneth Harville. Enjoy making these ragtag misfits of the West careful of those crossroad devil deals. Yes. <laughs> thank you uh and five foot latina looking forward to the adventures of crystal charlie othello and that one other person <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. we'll, we'll get to them thank you all yeehaw yeehaw, yeehaw. yeehaw. Uh. 
should have used real boobs. That's <laughs> what we're going to do next time, Noir. <laughs> I don't think good to see. Um, okay, as someone who knows Deadlands well, this is from R.D. Armand. Dom, how cold are Noir and uh, Gnome coming into the Deadlands history, <laughs> would you say? Um, how... Uh, I think I think Noir, you've had some Deadlands experience for sure. Uh, uh that that's a no, Alex. Oh. <laughs> that's a no. <laughs> that was a Caffrey reference. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, I know I'm frozen. I'm coming in frozen. I have no idea how we actually roll for stuff. I just saw big numbers for stuff I like. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. But nope. I but I have this anticipation of uh, us playing, so it was very exciting. <laughs> oh, oh, that's so cool! I got mine right here. Hey, oh. we're going to uh, we're going to be giving away. I have I have some uh, Deadlands Deadlands fun things that I'm going to be giving away. Not this episode, but but be watching our socials for for that. So uh, you might be winning one of those dice trays. Um, how about you, know? So, so I normally play sci-fi games. <laughs> yeah, you do. So as far as space goes, dead, frigid, dead, absolutely <laughs> just stone cold. Uh, okay, there you have it. There you have it. Um, and I don't know if if uh, Rachel has played um, uh, much of uh much savage worlds at all so um megan may be the veteran and and it's and it's interesting none of you have yet mentioned grim servant or or wait uh no not grim servant of death is it grim servant of death no it's veteran yeah. of the weird west oh. oh uh veteran of the weird west where you start out uh a level higher than everybody else Ooh. So you get a lot more stuff at the beginning. Veteran of the Weird West, yeah. Where you start off with a lot more things at the beginning, but uh, yeah. some pretty hefty um, uh, penalties as well. Uh, one more toast. Thank you very much. Again, enter the rectangle. It says, finally back in these here United States. No more rising with the sun to catch my favorite saddle tramps. Yeehaw! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, any are were there any other questions? Um, uh, it from the chat. Uh, let me see. If I do have some notes. Let's see. Oh, uh, this is from this is from Clint. Uh, trade is for day to day tasks needed to run a business. Uh, note the specific trade would be in parentheses. So like a blacksmith, a saloon owner, a miner, etc. Trade lets an entrepreneur raise funds as the performance skill in Savage Worlds through advertising, money saving tactics and buying cheaper goods. So if you go to a store or anything like that, you can use your trade to to bargain or barter. Uh, and and as a GM for Savage Worlds, I like when players um, tell me how they want to use their skills uh, more than, you know, roll me a notice roll. Tell me tell me if you don't think it should be notice, if you think it should be trade. Give me a good reason for it to be trade and I may let you do that. So those types of things, that's kind of how this will play out. So that's that's what trade is. So now we know. Um, and no one's have to battle. I'm oh, sorry, I could. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different setting for Savage Worlds. That's... Um, let's see. Uh, I okay. No other questions have come in that I see. Do you all have any uh, questions or concerns or? maybe things that you would want to fill out uh, with uh, with your characters before we uh, before we end for the night and start next week with some edges. 
I mean, like, I, I mean, if this is like stars and wishes, I got a wish. Yes, do it. <laughs> uh, like, I, I kind of like how we all are like we we don't have like a shooter shooter, uh, and I kind of think that's an opportunity for like us to learn how how this group defends itself together. So I think that would be a pretty cool story beat to kind of make, like make a strength of our group weakness. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, you. You, if you don't have someone who is good at shooting or is a shooter at all, you will have to have come up with ways to to mitigate that problem, um, for sure. As a as a as a group, and also we're we're going to cover this next week. But how do you all know each other? How how have you worked together? How long have you known each other? Are you just meeting for the first time um, at uh, episode one? We'll 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 cover that stuff um in uh next week's episode but but those are things to be thinking of we all met at an applebee's <laughs> <laughs> old applebee's yeah, good old applebee's good old applebee's, Ye old applebee's. <laughs> i love it mitigate problem run away it's the same thing right yes simple savage. <laughs> yes yes it is uh, John Doom asks, uh, do I have a theme in mind for the game that could tie the players together? Um, I, I, I have a concept for what they're going to be, um, up against, but, uh, I have no theme that I was, that was going to kind of come about as we created the characters and sort of built the world that they're going to inhabit. Uh, it is Deadlands. All the Deadlands aspects are there. Uh, there are servitors there. There's there's undead. There's, you know, creepy crawlies, all sorts of bad news bears types things uh, in there, in addition to your your gunslingers and uh, all of that. But um, in terms of, you know, a, a general theme, that's going to kind of come together when all of these players kind of round out their characters and we can kind of talk a little bit more. So we're going to cover all of that sort of world building stuff uh, next episode. So a week from today. Um, and yeah. Um, Christian Serrano. Hi, how's it going? Um, are you all using the awesome savage.us importer for foundry VTT? Because whoever maintains that code is really handsome and cool. Um, <laughs> yes, Christian, we are, we are indeed using the importer for foundry. Yes. Uh, we will get into Foundry stuff on episode three when we jump into actual gameplay. Uh, you'll see some Foundry. This isn't a, a Foundry how-to or anything like that, but um, we will be using Foundry uh, for, you know, on-screen narrative type stuff. So I hope I hope that you tune in for that. Uh, any any other questions before we start wrapping up for the night? This was good. We really went far. <laughs> Yeah, this was fun. Like, I don't have a question. I've got a promise. So I promise somehow, some way, I will introduce Applebee's to this game. That, that is how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> right in the That's my entire goal in this game. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm sorry. I'm, no, I'm I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I I'm just I'm just remembering, and and Megan probably is too, of, of fondly of things we would had no intention of making things in in our game that eventually became things in our game. Um, it's true. It's very true. Uh, soon, Raccoon uh, says some some, th some systems are easier or harder to do a GM prep for. How is Savage Worlds? Personally, for me, Savage Worlds is is really easy from a mechanical standpoint to GM. Um, I think all the regular difficulties of, of planning and, um, you know, building sessions and stuff like that still exist. But when you're actually playing it, um, uh, it, the, the mechanics flow really well. And so I don't have to think about that. And, and, you know, if I throw a bad guy that I don't want them to hurt or something like that, like that's really easy to do. And mechanically, I can I can have it make sense. Or even if, you know, I don't want them to hurt, but they end up 
they do end up hurting it, you know, like that can always happen. It's really easy to go on the fly with Savage Worlds. I'm not stuck in a box of, you know, hit points that I have to adhere to and stuff. I mean, there's always room for that in, in any system, but but I feel like Savage Worlds particularly. It's a, it's yeah. a fully improvisable system. I feel like if you once you've played it enough times, GMing wise, you you can you can yeah, you can come up with combat on the fly fairly simply. Um, which is cool. It's cool to be yeah. able to do. It gives you a lot of uh, freedom um, to move as a GM. Right. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And John Doom says, don't do not introduce a BBEG to the players if you're not ready for that BBEG to get one shotted right there. That's entirely well, true. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Are you serious? It's very swingy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. The, um, it's the system that a house cat can kill a legendary character or something like that, but also yeah. like a novice can kill a big bad. Yeah. Yeah, we there there are many stories in the in throughout wild cards of of characters doing that or um bad guys doing that to us. Um I mean we we, yeah, almost, I was just a, we almost lost oh, a character yeah. in episode one uh of yeah, the very first episode of Wild Cards, a character almost died because Ooh. Jordan kept acing on on his rolls of damage and you know, we were novice characters. We had no toughness whatsoever or anything like that so yeah it's been yeah. It's been wild um awesome okay so uh thank you all for joining us i'm going to wrap it up here uh and as we wrap it up i'm just going to um spin it around to to all of y'all and just tell us where folks can find you next what you're what you're up to what you're doing uh and uh yeah let's start uh with uh, noir Hello, everybody. I'm Noir. Uh, I play Othello King. Oh man, I'm, I'm really, I'm really that's, liking that man. That's so cool. <laughs> I, I love that. Uh, I'm the community manager for Evil Genius Games. We've got our Kickstarter for Everyday Heroes. So if you uh, want to, you know, play Highlander or The Crow, check it out. Give us a backing. Other than that, you can find me over at. Uh, uh, Oh my goodness, the no Nick, but everywhere online, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. Thank you guys for having me. This is so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, Megan. Uh, hi, I'm Megan Caves. You can uh, follow me on um, on the socials at Megan Caves. My name is spelled below. You can see it right, right below me. Um, <laughs> um, so the let's see what's happening this week. The next thing is a Friday. 6 p.m. at uh, youtube.com slash gone rogue ENT um, will be the premiere of episode five of Harbingers. So if you have enjoyed Savage World so far and you want to see more of it, come on over. That's what we're doing. Uh, it's also Suede. Um, mm -hmm. Come check it out. We're getting close to the end of this season. So yeah, that's pretty exciting. Um, and then uh, coming soon, if you want to see some more Savage Worlds, I'm going to be doing Axion, Axion over with uh, Valor Studios. Uh, we're pre-recording that, so it will come out a little bit later. But that is um, Cheyenne's own sort of oh, yeah. setting that he's created that is, um, it is space opera. It's basically steampunk space opera. So um, it's going to be pretty cool. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, just follow me on, on the socials. It's easier to, to, to keep up with what's happening there. <laughs> but thank you. It was very exciting yeah. to be back. Steampunk space opera. That's that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, thanks, TPK Roleplay, for the raid. Um, we are just ending now, but but we still have a little bit left to go. Oh. So hey, but thank, you all, thank you all for joining us. Uh, and uh, over to Gnome. Let us know where folks can find you. Yeah, hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Gnome. I do a bunch of TTRPG things in TTRPG spaces. Most notably, you can find me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning, bright and flipping early, sharing a cup of something with uh, my bestie, the Stitched by Eris, uh, where we talk uh, we, we talk TTRPGs, news, and just life in general uh, on our morning talk show called Gnome Brew. Um, I'm also the editor of the 
is Stitch of Fate podcast. Uh, so you can check them out on Twitter by Pod by Night if you like Vampire the Masquerade. Uh, but it's a it's a pretty gruesome. Oh gosh, the last episode was wild. Uh, <laughs> but that's all I'm going to say on that one. And ultimately, I have a bunch of tabletop stuff in the works right now, but I'm not able to talk about things yeah there's wow. podcasts Come there's on. live streams there's so many things going on uh so just uh if you if you want to keep up to date like uh like megan said uh you could just follow me over at nomadic pretty much anywhere on the internet and thank you all so much for having me i i, I cannot wait to play charlie big bazoo warren <laughs> i'm just gonna be using this voice all the time until i can whistle properly oh because i can't whistle yet yeah, you gotta get that yeah. <laughs> I, got a, I got a little gap in my teeth. I'm trying. <laughs> I got a week to practice. <laughs> oh, and I have been your hapless GM, your marshal uh, for Deadlands, uh, Dom Zook. And you can find me on Twitter at Gadzook, or you can follow uh, everything we do here at Saving Throw Show at Saving Throw Show. Pretty much everywhere there's a potential for social media social media saving throw show that's savage world's social media saving throw show anyway go there uh thank you to everyone who tipped who donated for uh toasts who subbed up on our ko-fi really 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 appreciate it thank you so much that support goes a very long way to to keeping these things going and if you like what we're doing and you want to see more of this uh your your subs kind of you know money talks in a in a way and helps us kind of direct where our programming goes so if you like what you see and you want to see more of that consider supporting the channel so that we can continue doing that and supporting the people who are uh, on their on this channel and devoting their time for it so uh, we appreciate all of you who are here uh and and playing this game with us and of course you at home who are watching. So thank you all for tuning in. Uh, next week we'll have a full house, uh, assuming power comes back. Uh, <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, we're going to jump into edges. We're going to jump into world building. We're going to jump into gear uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about combat and we might see a little combat. Uh, we might get a little taste of it. Uh, next week. So definitely tune in Tuesday, 6 o'clock Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern time. God knows when in Europe. Uh, but, you know, God bless you for watching. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.